The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Law number 26. Keep your hands clean. You must seem a paragon of civility and efficiency. Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds. Maintain such a spotless appearance by using others as scapegoats and cat's paws to disguise your involvement. Conceal your mistakes. Have a scapegoat around to take the blame. Our good name and reputation depend more on what we conceal than on what we reveal. Everyone makes mistakes, but those who are truly clever manage to hide them and to make sure someone else is blamed. A convenient scapegoat should always be kept around for such moments. Understanding the workings of power and the importance of appearances, shop around for the most convenient head and have it served up immediately. Occasional mistakes are inevitable. Handle them. People of power are undone not by the mistakes they make, but by the way they deal with them. The mistake does not vanish with an apology. It deepens and festers. It's better to cut it off instantly, distract attention from yourself, and focus attention on a convenient scapegoat. Do not give people time to ponder your responsibility or your possible incompetence. The bloody sacrifice of the scapegoat seems a barbaric relic of the past, but the practice lives on to this day, if indirectly and symbolically. Since power depends on appearances and those in power must seem never to make mistakes, the use of scapegoats is as popular as ever. Besides conveniently shifting blame, a scapegoat can serve as a warning to others. Example of Cesare Borgia. Robert Greene took the following right out of Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince. Cesare Borgia used the scapegoat to gain control of large parts of Italy. He gave Remiro di Orco, a cruel and vigorous man, absolute powers. With extreme violence, he would enforce Cesare's rule with brutal justice and grow hated by the local population. To guard his own reputation, to avoid being associated with Orco's gruesome actions, to calm the people's scream for revenge, he publicly stated that he had in no way ordered Orco to do what he did, and imprisoned, beheaded and blamed him. Cesare had painted a pleasing picture for the public, who not only wished Orco's death, but that his cruelty be repaid. Next to his headless body, Orco's head was spiked up on a pike. To quote Achilles fighting Hector at the temple of the sun god, Why would I kill you now, young prince, if no one sees how you fall? Cesare built a spectacle for everyone to see. Not only can you use others as scapegoats, but you can make them your cat's paw. In the fable, the monkey grabs the paw of his friend, the cat, and uses his paw to get it to fish chestnuts out of the fire, so as to get the nuts without hurting himself. If there is something unpleasant or unpopular that needs to be done, it is far too risky for you to do the work yourself. You need a cat's paw, someone who does the dirty work for you. The cat's paw grabs what you need, hurts whom you need hurt, and keeps people from noticing that you are the one responsible. Let someone else be the executioner, or the bearer of bad news, while you bring only joy and glad tidings. Cleopatra was more than only a woman. She was a queen, an empress, a goddess. Her appearance would never be the same, only ever wearing the nicest robes and accessoires, probably one of the most dangerous seductresses in history. Like many women still today, she used her feminine qualities to get men to do as she desired. At the age of 10, she witnessed her father Ptolemy XII get overthrown and banished by her elder sisters. Berenice emerged as the leader of the rebellion, had her other sisters imprisoned and her own husband murdered to secure her own rule. This extreme violence on one of her own made the public resent her and four years later Ptolemy could return beheading the elder sisters. In 51 BC, Ptolemy died and left four remaining children as heirs. The eldest son, the 11 years old Ptolemy XIII, married the elder sister Cleopatra. Incest was common in order to keep royal positions and thus power in the family. In a fight for power, Cleopatra was exiled. None dared to make the same mistake as Berenice by killing one of their own. It would inevitably shed a dark light on the murderer. Therefore, Cleopatra bided her time and schemed. When she heard of Julius Caesar's plan to make Egypt a Roman colony, she arranged to see him, seducing and thereafter using him as a tool to destroy her siblings and other enemies to get the throne for herself. In 41 BC, she would use the same tactics on Mark Antony. 
she was able to reduce both of these very powerful and dangerous men to her cat's paws, doing exactly what she wanted them to. And that's it for this law. However, there is an additional lesson for men to be learned here. Even a great man such as Julius Caesar was tamed by feminine charm. Be wary of the Cleopatras in today's society. Their numbers have grown enormously, while the odds for men to become a Caesar are constantly diminishing. As always, thanks for watching.